Hey everyone, so I'm going to show you what I'll be doing today. Now I picked these pebbles up over in Scotland, really nice weathered pebbles that have took a bashing in the river and uh, it's actually got little silver flecks in it. don't know if you can see that on camera but it makes them beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some paintings on these with either, you can use acrylics or watercolours. Uh, I've got this stone which is a different type of rock which I'm going to do another painting on. It's nice because of the way it sits. I'll have that one portrait. I'll have that one. That way, landscape. And that one, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. I'll probably do a landscape on that like so. So that's how it'll be faced for me. So what I'm going to use is a brilliant white silk emulsion. Now this is the same as what I use for priming my canvases. Just remember it's not a map matte emulsion it's a silk emulsion it's a, a good quality one too right so all you do is take them out there in fact I might as well do this one first just get a small brush I've got two little brushes here that I'm going to use and then just grab some of your white and you want to basically paint a canvas on here now working out where I want it to go don't have to be that accurate at first just do a general guide for yourself for how you want it to be a general shape you can make it square if you like I like to give them a bit of a rounded appearance just concentrate on that edge that's all I'm thinking about is that little edge just there. Try and get it even, either side. I've done loads of these. I've probably done thousands of these to be honest with you. I used to sell them to tourists. It's where I come from. There's a lot of tourists in this area, Yorkshire. Yorkshire Dales is a very popular holiday spot for people. So I used to go to certain areas, certain shops and I used to sell them, I used to sell them around £4 a piece and it's a bit of fun you know it's amazing the detail you can get in such a small picture too you don't have to work that hard for it if you if you know what you're doing and that's what I'm here to show you all so you just put yourself a little frame on it like so a bit more paint on there because you usually have to give it to a free coats so it's just the the outside edge that I'm thinking about at the moment but you don't have to be perfect perfect just make it natural go with the flow of the stone is what I used to, uh, generally do I follow the lines sometimes of the actual rock I think it looks nice So I'll just lay it on first like I am doing and then I can have a, a bit of a look at that canvas shape. Uh, that's getting there, I'm happy with that. Now I'll uh, basically be let this dry and then give it another coat. Definitely need another coat because you want it to be as white as possible for when you start painting. Now I'm using this matte emulsion in with the acrylics that I use too. So because acrylics are very expensive if you you know what I mean, if you're buying quality acrylics. But I, I tend to buy a lot of cheaper acrylics and I found ways of making them more brilliant, the colours more intense. So if you want to make a colour stronger you can sometimes just put white underneath it first like this if you're going to put some a, a highlighter green you put the white down first let it dry and then the green over the top of that and then a shadow whereas with oil paints you would put the shadow in first and then put your leaves on so it's a bit like the opposite of oils is acrylics if you like but when you're doing it on a small thing like this, it's just, it's a lot of fun. There's no stress, there's no worries. You can just sit there, relaxed, and just create these amazing little pictures. 
like I say, I've done thousands of them in my time. And I've sold every single one of them as well. Apart from the ones I've given away. Like I say, they're good for tourists, they're good for birthdays. Do this for somebody for the birthday and much better than getting it, buying them something, you know, all the effort that you've had to put into that. They'll well appreciate it. Especially if it's somewhere they love, of a place where they love. Yeah, something about like that. We'll call that it for, for now. So you get your, your little canvas, it's going to go that way. Let that dry, give it another coat, and I'll see you again soon. Right, so I'm going to get started on this guy. So a good dry brush. I'm just going to go straight into some white acrylics. Straight white acrylics. And then just on this area of the sky here, I'm going to put a good amount of that white acrylics on there. Because it will dry, so you need to be quite quick. Put some white acrylic on there. Let it stay quite wet. Right up in there too. All up in this sky area basically. Want some of that acrylics. Just up in there. Right. So I've put the white on and I'm gonna use this mixture that I've made which is a lizard and crimson, tiny bit of the sepia and some Prussian blue. Mix that with the white and then up in here just come to the very top of the sky area and add some of that colour in. Just up in there. If you go over the edge you can just wipe it off with your finger. So I'm just going to add some of that all the way around there. Just like so. Scared of getting it on there. And it'll mix with the acrylics that you just put on there basically. That's what we're wanting. So, once you've got that top edge done, you can come down a little bit. Take a couple of coats to get this effect that I'm after. Get some of that colour in there. Nicely. Just in that sky area. Add a little bit of water now and again. It'll just help to blend that out into there. This is the light tone for the sky. I don't want this to be too dark. I want it to be quite light, this first layer. And if it goes a bit dark in places, you just grab a touch of white. You just go over it. Blend it in there. Because I want it to be lighter on the horizon. Anyway. So there we go. Just... Bring that up now, into there. By adding that white as well, it sort of like makes it blend together that little bit better when you do it, when you add the white to it. Just straight white is that, there's no water mixed with it. And if you, by starting at the horizon line, you'll still always have a bit of that colour on your brush. I know it doesn't stand out right much, but I don't want it to, not this stage. And then you can just work your way up into that area where it gets darker at the top. And then I can get some of that colour, mix it in the palette, get it a bit darker. Just in there. And then just on the very top edge, I want it to be darker still. So I just come on there with that darker tone. Reload it if it runs out. You can't paint with a, without paint on your brush. There, just a bit darker on that top edge. And I'm doing that part now because I can blend it then because there's the white on there as well. This is, don't matter if it dries up a little bit because 
you can just touch a bit of that white back into it and it'll keep giving because <laughs> it's still that dark colour on the brush even though you've put the white on there and if you go over the edge just pull it right back that's the mistake that if you go over the edge it's a mistake so just pull it with your finger and wipe it off again and you can work up to that edge there we go and blend it basically best you can up to that top bit starting lighter getting darker just flip in there I'm happy right, I'm just going to let that dry now right so I'll just give you a little close up of that so that you can see that sky properly there just hope it gets a little bit darker towards the top edge there just only a very very light coat this is the undercoat under colour for the sky put that down there it's hard to, it really doesn't stand out well on the camera yet but it will right now up in here I'm just going to have some clouds so I've mixed the colour of lizard and crimson yellow and white like a peachy colour and with that picture colour, I just want to gently come up in here, there's a big cloud. I just want to, just to very gently tap some of that colour in there. It's a very strong tone. And it comes down at a bit of an angle. Just down in there. That's what I'm after. And it's quite a fat little cloud because it's, it's got sun highlighting on top of it too. So it's just hitting the very top part of it as well. Just in there, and then it comes along. It's going to have a shadow to it. Is this? This is just the highlight for the top of the cloud. Nice, vibrant colour though. Look at that. Hope it's standing out on camera, all right. I've obviously got a shadow with the lighting. Just a little bit of that going on. And then it goes down. Just in here. And across. There's another bit on top of this cloud that's just in there. Right, so if, you see how I'm just adding the colour at the moment. That's all I'm doing. Just adding a bit of colour in there. We can go back with a soft brush and blend it with some water. If we need to. They don't like straight edges, I like them to be a bit fluffy, even when it's just a, a bright highlight on top of a cloud. I want it to be a bit fluffy, I don't want it to be too solid, the edge. There, so that's that big cloud coming across. And then we've got them underneath, which are quite subtle. And we've got a couple. I'm just going to get most of that paint off of there, and just leave a tiny bit of it left on. And just down in here where we're going to have some clouds in the background, a little lower down. I'm just going to put some little highlights for them. So there's a bit of colour in there. There's some of these horizon clouds that I'm going to have in there. But I only want that to be light, you see. Because I'm going to put some of that shadow colour going on in there. You can put some little indications of stuff that's a bit lighter as well in tone. And once that's starting to dry a bit, which is where we started, which is the strongest part of the sky, you can go back into that and just make it a bit more vibrant. Because I know I'm going to use a shadow colour into this, and that's going to sort of like dull it down a tiny bit. So by doing this, it just uh, helps that stay in the, that colour. It's drying in between each stage. It's not like using traditional watercolours using it in a different way to that, using it a bit more like you'd use acrylics. But this is mixed media, you see, so you can mix a acrylic white with watercolour that's white. Don't normally use white in, a, in watercolours, but for this it's perfect, you need it for this colour. And you can just put a tiny bit of water on there, because the watercolours dissolve, you see. And it just allows you to move the paint around a bit or soften it or 
just change the shape of things so just a bit of that colour in there I'm happy with that for this stage just get a bit there now I'm just going to get some straight white just straight white I've obviously got a little bit of that colour on the brush anyway and I'm just going to go in there and put some of that in horizon just in there I want it to be muted, that orange on the horizon. I want it to be muted. Just put a bit of that white over the top of it and it'll just stand out. That's good. Maybe in there, I don't want it quite as bright neither, so you can just mute that as well. It's more vibrant in that area, that part of the cloud. Right, so I'm actually going to I hope that stands out to you what I've just done now. I'll show you a close up of that. There, you see that? Orange in the sky. Right. Now I'm going to use, go back and use this colour, which is the colour we use for the sky. The only difference is I'm not going to actually put any. I'm not going to have it as light, it's going to be a much, much darker tone that I put into this. Much, much darker. There. That's the sort of colour that I'm after. Put a tiny bit more blue in with that. And a bit more crimson as well. Just see it there. So I'm mixing a dark lavender. And if I want to mute it, I just add a little bit of the sepia, sepia colour. There. And it's getting that balance right between the blue and the crimson because they're both strong colours. And one wants to eat up the other. Just keep put, adding water to it as well. There. Something about like that. Let's just check it out anyway. Right, so I want this to come right along the sky and then just have a dark centre in there. So that just a bit of that orange shows through as a glow. And up in here, I want to cover most of it up. Just up in there. Just going to cover most of that up. And just leave a little bit showing at the top of the orange, tiniest little bit, so if you want to actually move that about a bit you can just add a tiniest bit of water to it, just in there, and that'll allow me to just wish a few bits on the end of there, that's it, and then That's it. Soften that other edge up. Just letting a glow of that show through, basically, that orange. Just a little glow in there. Uh, sort of fluffy, dark, silhouetted clouds of these. They're going to be quite dark at the top and then get lighter as they come down. actually wisps right off into there. A couple of little clouds in here. Leave some of that orange just on its own. You get a lighter as it come down to these clouds. Lighter in tone. That dark going on in there. There we go. I'm happy with that. Just up in here, we've got some as well. Let's get a bit more colour. Just up in the very top part up in there, I'm going to do some too. Some little wispy ones. So for that you need to have 
not as much paint on your brush for these wispy ones. A lot, a lot less paint. I knew it would be a challenging demonstration to do this anyway because it's so small and it's going to be hard for you to see it. But I hope I'm doing a good job to make it so you can just about make out what I'm doing. Some little silhouetted clouds just up in top up in there. Just breaking. You see that? Happy. Take that out to the very top there. Blend it out. There. Right. As you can see at that stage how it's going. Now I'm not too worried yet because I'm wanting to go back in and stuff to certain areas. So I can just sometimes just put a little bit of water on there and rejuvenate that colour that's already on the brush. So I can use it because it dries up quickly with watercolours and acrylics and stuff. And down in here I just want to indicate some layers of clouds. So I just go pull straight along on the horizon. I want them to be quite gentle and light though, I don't want them to be strong. Not like the ones above. There. That's it. Happy. Good. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more for you. So you can see a bit better. to see the colour and everything. Now I'm still with that blue, just away from here I've got a few little layers that come off from the main cloud and then just up in here it actually goes right up and joins up with that one there. So that's just one big dark cloud on that side. Now I'm just going to mix a little bit of the sepia with it now a bit of this sepia the straight dark sepia tone a bit of crimson to that a bit more blue just making it darker basically there. so a nice purple yeah something like that and this cloud here in particular i'm just going to darken it up in the center just in the center of it so I can have some good contrast with it. Pull it out there. You know, so I'm always following this edge as well on the right hand side just here. So that it's smooth. And then just in the centre of that, you notice I'm doing this and then it's only going in the centre at the moment. And then I can blend it out gently afterwards, like so. Don't colour all that orange, just leave a bit of that orange showing through. Because these clouds are in more or less silhouette. So they do want to be a pretty sharp. They don't want to be uh, too muted. So by doing it a little bit darker, just this one cloud, it sits the other ones back. And it also makes this one stand out so much more. There we go. And it makes these bright areas on the cloud also stand out more. Sometimes you just get a little bit of white with that. And you can just go back in. So it's not quite as bright on the end. So just a little bit of white on with that. Just makes it easier to work with. Not quite as bright, uh, as dark, sorry, on the end of the cloud. And the way it gets darker, the further into the cloud it goes because that's where it's at its deepest is the cloud, so it's more likely to be uh, darker in that certain area. Let that go to the dark, completely dark in there. 
Nice. That's just one big chunky cloud going on now in there. It's good. Happy. So just darken this off a tiny bit. Just up in there. Clean the brush off completely. I put a bit of colour on there. I don't want this to be too strong this bit. A bit of colour on and then I'll just squeeze all the water out of it. I'm just cleaned the brush and squeezed all the water out of it and I can just go back in that and then just blend it in. There. So a little bit of that colour. But the orange will still show through. Just that's all we want. Right, I'm just going to go back in here with a bit of white with the sky colour as well mixed to it, just a tiny bit of the sky colour though, just some white and then just up in here where I've lost a bit of this sky, I just want to come back, not a problem you see, if you cover it up like I did there, you just come back with that white and a bit of the blue on it, a bit of the sky colour and you can just pop that back in just in there. There's a bit of sky showing through the actual clouds. They're not solid there, they're, they're breaking up and a bit wispy. So just by introducing that colour again, that lighter colour, it'll make it work. Just in there. Maybe a bit more just in there too. A bit of definition as well. Yeah, happy. Quite a moody scene that I'm painting today. This just in there, they're two separate clouds. So, just by doing that, that's what we've got two separate clouds, just one wisping into the other. Right, just fill around with it till you're happy. What I want to do, because these have gone a bit duller, these oranges, you know, that I wanted to have in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use some white. It's another little trick that you can do. I'm using a hairdryer, by the way, you know, to dry it in between. I'll just paint some, paint that bit brighter just there first. There. Just get some of that white. Using a bit of the white acrylic mixed with watercolour white because the watercolour white tends to blend a little bit easier because it's not as runny. And I'm just going to go into this area where I've got the orange and I'm just going to put some of that white in there. It won't look right now when it's dried and I put some more orange over it. Them areas will really stand out nicely then. And that's what I'm after. Just in there. I can always put that dark in, that's not a problem, that's easy. But there's just a little orange glow up in there and it's lost its brightness. So just by adding that bit of white in there, it'll help you to go over the top with some orange and it'll be sparkly then. A bit more bright. Same's happened down here as well. Just on this one. when you get a little bit of the blue mixed with it that that happens just go over it with the white let it dry and then highlight again with some more orange over the top and that will really stand out then it's easy to muck, muck your colour up when you're doing this so just don't worry about it because everything's correctable there's not nothing you can't fix on here Especially with watercolours and acrylics, they're very versatile medium. So you don't need to worry about making any mistakes because you'll still be able to get a nice painting out of it. There, just dry that with a hairdryer a bit. Test that it's 
dried yeah dries nice and fast clean off the brush the white off the brush and then mix it into this orange, orange color that we've made with a crimson and the yellow and also a little bit of white just right, so I'm happy with that for now you can always go back into it whenever I choose no problems there so I'm just going to get that same color the, the lavender I want to get some Prussian blue crimson and I'm also going to get some sap green I've already got a bit of cadmium yellow in there so I can always use that as well Right, so I'm just going to use the blue and the crimson together to make a lavender. Really nice lavender colour. Blend that in there. Get it to twang that you want it. Just in there. Don't want it too dark. So we've got blue, crimson, and then I want to add some sap green to that, and a little bit of cadmium yellow. So it's a dark, a dark green with a bit of a lavender tinge, and then I can get a bit of white. Stick some white in there. Check the colour out. Don't want too much. Check out that colour that you've got. Something like what I'm wanting. Maybe a bit more white to it. It is in the background. And a tiny bit more of the blue too. There, that's better. Getting something like what I'm wanting. Keep playing with it until you're happy though. Don't just go ahead and do it because that's when you'll regret regret it right so we've got just down in here it starts around here come down it's a bit dark is that still see if you test it first i get some white on my brush with that dark color that's up underneath and then that'll probably be enough to give me the tone that i'm wanting actually yeah that's better there's a bit of paint on there. Now it, just, it starts off there. Just come down that edge. And the white's mixing with that colour now, making it that slight bit lighter for me. And then just from there it goes up. Flattens off on top. I'm really wanting to get the shape of the stripe because Ingleborough is a very recognisable shape, distinctive. Everyone recognises it straight away from the shape of it. You can see it from miles around. Something like that. And then that goes straight down. a bit of water to that just to make it glide a bit better just a bit of water that'll help it to mix a bit better and it'll help it flow over the surface better so I want that to go to about there that's it And then block it off on the end, just there. Pull down on the edge. Be careful of the edges. 
then just in here I want to have it a bit lighter just at the base so I get a bit of white a little bit of the sap green if I can see it there it is a bit of white bit of sap green together Still got a bit of that other colour on there as well. So I've got white and sap green just in there. And then just along here I can put some of that in. Just a few hints of it fast. I'm gonna go over this again, let it dry, go over it again, because it always looks better when you do that with acrylics. Otherwise you can see the white underneath and you don't always want to see that. There we go. Oh my pillow. How oh, that's going. You can actually go a tiny bit darker on there. Some more white mixed with it. Just mixing uh, some more of the colour up. And I can just go back in. Back in there. Get it exactly how I want it. Bring that up a bit higher. And then it comes down. There. That's better. See how it's a bit more solid now with two coats. Just on that top edge. Because it's not that far away in this, I don't want it to be that soft. And I'll let that dry and then put some of them like bits of grass in there so I just want to put a tinge of that green I'll do it now while it's wet actually it doesn't matter in there it's quite green I can mix it with the white as well just to brighten it up in there a tad there you're just integrating a little bit of that green into the lower areas where the fields are just below this uh, hill Also, just clean that brush off. I'm gonna mix another colour with the yellow. It's a different kind of green, basically. I'm gonna use the yellow, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of red, a little crimson with that. Make a, a rusty colour. And then just put a tiny amount of sap green in with that too. Just there like so. I'm just using this other brush now. I have, buy a lot of these cheap brushes. They really come in handy. Just here and there I just want to integrate a little bit of that colour into it. Same over in there, just a, a little bit here and there. Colour top. That's it. Happy. Bit of cadmium yellow mixed with the green. Cadmium yellow and green. And then I can just brighten this bit up a bit. It's down in here. There. Where you can see fields just coming in, into view a bit. There's only a few little fields because this is like a rocky outcrop in front of limestone, the limestone pavement all down in here. Uh, paint a bit of that colour just up in here too. There. That's good. Now in between there, I'm going to go back to this darker colour. In fact, I might use a different brush. Yes, I will. Just going to go into my darker colour with the green on. There's a bit of green alongside the darker colour. Just in there, I just mixed it in with it. Hopefully that'll be dark enough to stand out now. And then, just in here, there's a few little 
where you can, it's really distant, dry stone wall basically. Put them in while it's like this. And they're just working their way along the edge of here. A couple of little trees on there and stuff. indications stuff going on just up in here I can touch into that Put some things down at angles from up in here there's some stuff coming down from angles it's not too dark there's a few dark spots just in Take a look. A bit in there. Just up in here, we've got a few little dark bits. Where there's a few little rocky outcrops showing. We'll have a bit of snow on that as well, just a tiny bit. It's nearly thawed out, and there's just a little bit of snow still left on it. That's what it was. bits going on. Just these little details that are in there, a few little bushes, distant bushes that are just dark. And that always looks good. Just in the background. You can hardly see them make them out. Oh. Get some darker colour. So it stands out a bit better. That's better. There. And that goes right on like a wall that goes all the way along. And then, because in Yorkshire Dales, a lot of these walls are just at side of fields. So you can actually use the lines and the angles to create the fields basically. Now, that's the little bit here, yeah, we'll have to come up here and join to that. If you don't come off first time, try, try again. That's what I'm after. Right, I'll give you a look at that. Start to see where I'm going with it now. Yorkshire Dales, how wonderful are they? It's hard to show you without getting that glimmer on it. You can see it there? Yeah, there's no glimmer there, you can see that. You can make it out, can't you? Right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get a bit of white. Titanium white. And then just up in here, Got a bit of snow just sat on top of this. Uh, peeking out. Comes over here. Still haven't thawed out yet this. Don't worry if you get a bit too much in one spot. It's easy to move it. Get rid of it. I'm going to be doing a demonstration soon. There's a subscriber who had the idea. It's a bit of a brainstorm, really. He uh, he said, would I do a painting where I intentionally do things wrong so that I can show people how to actually correct it when they do it wrong? And it's a really good idea, actually. So I'll be doing a demonstration that how not to paint or something. <laughs> I don't know what the title will be. But uh good idea, great idea that he had. That's it, that's about what I'm after. And just over in here, there's a little bit of snow just in there as well. See, I put it in straight white, clean my brush off, 
get some of the dark and then just in between these areas I can reinstall some of these uh, darks just here and there so it's not just one white shade that's it there we are that's what we're after that sort of effect not loads up there just a little bit of snow on top again I'll show you that and then what we're gonna do is have just it coming through at an angle we're gonna have a load of limestone coming through so I'm just gonna get a good dark color a good dark color just so that we've got something for the white to contrast against and it also gives uh, a good indication of where the rocks are for you even though they're going to be light you're going to need that dark shadow in there to give them the contrast so it's a rocky outcrop so it's not perfectly straight and it comes right down to about there but it's coming down at an angle something about like that